Hey everyone! A while back we challenged Hector to 1v2 lane phase to prove that you don't need a support to carry in low elo. One of the complaints that we saw from that challenge was, well, Hector got an experience lead because his support is AFK, so of course he won. While we didn't believe that to be a strong argument, since he literally 1v2 the laning phase, we appreciated the opportunity to make his life just a bit harder. So this time, we had his support feed during lane phase, but also attach himself to Hector without skilling any abilities just to leech experience while also feeding kills to simulate a support from hell. During this experiment, Hector had to willingly lose lane while his teammates were feeding across the map. All of this was just to create a guide and show you how to carry games when number one, your support is totally useless, number two, your team is inting during lane phase, and number three, you fell behind in lane as well, so your whole team is losing including yourself. Before we go further, this guide will feature real-time commentary from Hector while he was doing this challenge. If you want to see more, then check out our full commentary games over at skillcap.com after this guide. We send challenger players into ELO Hell to see if they can climb out while commentating their actions and decision making. We'll also be asking you questions throughout so that you can see if you're able to think like a challenger. What we want to target with this guide is your mentality when falling behind. ADC probably has the least influence of any role in the game during lane phase. They're very reliant on their support skill and jungler's pathing a lot of the time. Even challenger ADCs may fall behind in low elo, but ask yourself this. If a challenger ADC fell behind in gold or platinum, do you think they'd be worried at all? Obviously no. Most of the time, climbing through low elo is about exploiting mistakes, not playing super well yourself. The players you're up against aren't good at closing out games, so you shouldn't be worried either. We'll be discussing the mindset that you should actually have and make sure you can carry more often whenever the lane phase goes boom. As we mentioned, Hector got even more weight strapped onto his back this time. We sent him along with one of our friends and had him, well, have a bit of a bad game. With the laning phase nice and lost, let's hear Hector's thoughts so far. Okay, so my support has inted. Can't really control that. Laning phase is pretty RNG. In this case, we're controlling the inting. I can't control whether I'll win or not. They have to int for me to win, right? So all I can control is how badly I lose. And I just don't... My goal is to go down like 30 CS. If I go down 30 CS, I will be fine. So, no surprises there. Hector wants to stay relevant and just not lose too badly. The interesting thing though is that he actually wants his tower to die as soon as possible. You heard that right, he actually wants his tower to die as soon as possible when things are going south. Let's get his real-time insights as to why this is key to carrying as an ADC when behind. Also, ideally, I would like them to kill my tower. It's actually good if you lose tower in low elo for a minion buff that towers give. If we get to that point in the game, I'll talk about it. Oh, yes, 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 yes. This is so good for me. Take it, take it. Oh, no, my tower went down. And here's why I want this to happen. Riot added a really weird mechanic a long time ago. Where like when the enemy team takes your tower, the wave pushes into you faster. So this is really good for you in low elo. It's actually better for you if your tower goes down because the waves are just going to push into you more often, which means you're going to get more farm. And the enemy, the low elo players don't know how to manage that. So they're just going to, they're just going to bleed farm over a long period of time. Okay, this may seem like a weird mindset to have, but it's actually a very smart way to think about getting back into a game if you consider it. What does taking tower give the enemy ADC in terms of gold? 600-ish plus all the turret plates they got. Let's say best case scenario they got like a thousand gold from taking your whole tower since they had to share some gold with their support. That most definitely sucks, but the upside is that you no longer have to lane with your support. Once the tower falls, the laning phase ends. The enemy duo is likely to rotate around the map, your support will maybe follow them, and you'll often find yourself alone in the bot lane. This is good for multiple reasons and exactly how you'll be getting back into the game. Try to remember that coming back into a game isn't really about making any proactive moves yourself. You're mostly waiting for the enemy to throw their lead. So, after the tower falls, what always happens? Yeah, the enemy bot is probably going to rotate around the map and try to pressure towers, putting your team at a numbers disadvantage. That's not good, but it's also not bad. Let's explain. Instead of being stuck in lane being zoned from farm, you'll be alone most of the time farming. No longer are you being zoned from farm, instead, the enemy who does come to pick up the farm in your lane will likely shove the wave and rotate back over the mid or wherever. That means that you're just farming and catching up on CS while the enemy pressure mid or wherever. 
An immediate concern is that this will just leave your team vulnerable since they'll always be at a numbers disadvantage. But is an ADC who has fallen behind going to make any difference being mid anyways? So that's an irrelevant concern, right? Therefore, since the negative isn't really a negative, let's break down the positives of when this happens. For starters, even if the enemy duo successfully runs around and takes towers, they're likely sharing a ton of tower gold and farm with their teammates. We've mentioned this before. Even if the enemy brute forces down the top lane tower with four members and earn a shared 800 gold in total, that's not necessarily better than you earning 600 gold alone in bot lane. This will put you at 400 gold ahead of the enemy ADC. Keep in mind, these are just arbitrary numbers for the sake of proving a point. Two, there are even better reasons why letting your tower fall is good. It's not inherently obvious, but the enemy minions actually get buffed whenever they manage to take your tower. For this, there's two formulas to look at. The first basically says that your minions will deal more damage based on how big of a level lead and tower lead that you have. There's no need to overthink the numbers here. If you have a level and turret lead, then the minions in that lane will deal more damage. The second is quite similar. If your team have a level and turret lead, then the waves in that lane will take less damage. The intended idea behind this mechanic by Riot was to help the winning team snowball and end faster, but it literally has the exact opposite effect. We'll go back into this mechanic at the end of the video as this statement may raise some questions. But yeah, losing your tower just funnels more gold to you in the long run. Sure, you're losing that immediate 625 gold or so when your tower dies, but if the enemy team is doing a poor job of manning their side waves, which, hello, Avramming and low elo is all people do, then they'll be bleeding out more gold and farm throughout the game. Their minions will more consistently overpower yours, allowing you to collect side waves more often than them. Hector wisely predicted this happening during his Ash game. Aren't you worried that they would just kill our teammates while you're farming? No, they're just going to run around aimlessly. Um, even if they kill my teammates like once or twice, that just means more of our towers go down, which means my team and I farm more. Like, Loyola players just don't know how to side lane farm correctly or, or know how to use the pressure. Caitlyn does indeed end up aimlessly running around the map while Hector is picking up waves. He quickly catches up in farm, proving his point. However, this 8-2 Caitlyn got some inspiration from Hector Soraka and basically ran it down, getting caught for no reason and making Hector's comeback way too easy for him. So like, despite me dying a lot, despite me, um, oh my god. Anyways, despite me dying a lot, I'm still ahead in this, of this Caitlyn in farm and it's because she like, she doesn't fix side waves like ever. She just pushes a wave and leaves it. While effortless comebacks like that will happen when the enemy ADC ints, that's not really how easy it should look. So off we go into another gold elo game. It won't be so easy this time. At just 25 minutes, Hector's team is down 34 kills to 15. They've lost the Infernal Soul, and Hector is against the nastiest anti-ADC comp in existence with each member on their team very fed. This is normally a GG go next kind of game, but let's see how we got here first and then how Hector carries anyways. Let's quickly recap how the game has gone so far. Like before, Hector's duo runs it down once, and then a second time. While making sure to stick around and leech experience just like in the last game. Hector's frail old man fingers fail to press E on this pike ultimate, having him die. Definitely not part of the plan. Finally, his tower does fall at 11 minutes, which as we know by now is exactly what he wants. And do keep in mind that when you're farming side lanes, especially versus certain comps, that it won't always look pretty. Even skilled players will make mistakes when it comes to staying safe in a sideline. <clears throat> Look at all three of them mid. Like, they're just gonna lose farm here for no reason. This is what I'm talking about. Now Syndra's coming, but she's missing quite a bit. Oh, never mind, never mind. Not a good moment. Don't put that in. I can't tell which is real. Like, she goes so OP, by the way. <laughs> but it doesn't matter how many obvious Shaco clones you willingly kill. The point is that in low elo, you will almost always have a side wave to go farm because waves are naturally pushing towards you. The main idea behind this strategy is that while your teammates may be getting munched by the fed enemy bot, you'll be farming just as much, if not more, than the enemy ADC. Yes, it's going to look a bit troll and your teammates might sometimes think that you are trolling. Hector was simply crashing a wave into the enemy's tower and then recalling while the enemy team is taking his mid tier 2. But look at the long term effects of doing so. A minute or so later, there is a huge wave amassing in bot lane. The entire time, no one on the enemy team has fixed the wave, so it's just a pile of gold waiting to be picked up by Hector. Or his Kha'Zix. Whatever, ideally you're the one who gets to pick up those waves, but you can't control what your teammates do. 
The game does continue to fall apart around him though. His teammates keep dying to the fed Lucian, and everything continues to go wrong. Not only that, but more and more of his team's towers continue to go down. Even if Hector is picking up a kill or two every now and then, things are looking bleak. But if you haven't noticed, even with everything going wrong, Hector is always farming. Nearly every bad situation he's been in, there's almost always a way for him to pick up. This is so much more impactful than being behind and going to ARAM with your team in mid, hoping for the enemy team to somehow lose a 5v5. Strategies like these give you more resources to work with while also making it much more likely that the enemy team throws. Not just for himself, almost his entire team is keeping up in farm with the enemy team. This most definitely shouldn't be possible with how disastrously far behind they are. Sure, ignoring your team early on can cause you to lose the game rather quickly, especially if they just continue dying. That's because when all of your towers are down, it just makes it much more likely that the enemy team overextends and throws. The proximity of fights that occur will always be closer to your own base rather than theirs, and of course throws are more likely to happen on your side of the map. But on the off chance that your team survives by spam farming, you'll actually be relevant when teamfights roll around. If you've noticed by now, Hector's damage is most definitely not ignorable. Whenever somebody gets near him, he's instantly deleting them. In fact, he's probably the strongest player in the game because of how much he's farmed. They can actually start to trade objectives. Little by little, with more and more throws, the game starts to look a little hopeful. Hope continues to rise as the enemy continues to throw. We're not going to lie, Hector definitely has above average mechanics for this elo range, but he's far from clean. We believe it's perfectly clear that it was just him following basic macro fundamentals that allowed him to catch back up to relevancy. And just like that, a literal unwinnable game for most ADCs, while still really difficult, was won. Eventually, Hector is so farmed that he's sold boots for 6 full items before Lucian has even completed his normal 6th item. Even through the Infernal Soul, he's able to mow people down instantly. Alright, so before we close this one out, let's address some of the questions that you may have. First, you may be wondering how to avoid being an AFK farmer that's never there when your team needs you. The main point of this guide was to display the true power of farming efficiently as an ADC during the windows where your opponents are struggling to snowball their advantages. You want to farm waves when they push pushed into your side of the map. While they're pushing towards you, you should group with your team in the meantime. Next, we mentioned that Riot's minion buff mechanic to help teams close out games often has the opposite effect. This may leave you wondering, should you actually let your tower die to help you win games even if you're ahead? This is a very interesting question that can definitely be argued for both ways. Losing your own tower can be very beneficial for many of the reasons stated in this guide. We don't feel confident answering that here, but if you have an opinion on it, feel free to comment below. We'd be very interested to hear your thoughts on self-sabotaging your towers for future farm advantages. Alright, that's it for this one. If you want to check out our full commentary games, be sure to check us out at skillcap.com. We have a brand new page for them being launched next week with weekly uploads. Also, we've just uploaded an epic guide over on our Valorant channel, so definitely check that out as well. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.